Okay, so we have done chapter one of the seventh, edi seventh edition of Stewart's Calculus. And so we're going to be switching over to the eighth edition, early transcendentals. And so um, with the content, there's, there's continuity between the content of the two. This would this is the appropriate place to make the switch. Okay. So the next section is derivatives and rates of change. We have talked about the tangent problem, the problem of finding the tangent li line to a curve and the problem of finding the velocity of an object. Both involve finding the same type of limit. The special type of limit is called a derivative, and we will see that it can be interpreted as a rate of change in any of the natural or social sciences or engineering. Okay, so we have an objective on tangents that the student would understand the idea of tangent line, which is going to be so central to differential calculus. So central to differential calculus. If a curve C has equation y equals f of x, and we want to find the tangent line to C at a point P, which, is, which has uh, coordinates A and f of A, then we consider a nearby point Q with variable coordinates x and f of x, x not equal to a, and compute the slope of the secant line PQ. So here's P, here's Q, the blue line, blue segment is part of the line PQ, and we want the slope of the line, okay? And so, well, we use a slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that's m. And so we have an expression for slope of the secant line. A secant line is a line that passes through two points on the curve. An expression for the slope of the secant line is f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. Then we let Q approach P along the curve C by letting X approach A. So Q approaches P, X approaches A. If the slope of line PQ approaches a number M, Okay, so now we have slopes approaching a slope. That is going to be the slope of that pink line there. We define the tangent t to be the line through p with slope m. So, you know, we're not going to say, as we did in 10th grade geometry, that the tangent to the curve is the line that has exactly one point in common with it and a secant two points. Here, you know, we, we talked about why that is not uh, sufficient to say it that way. We're saying the tangent line is the line through P with slope M. Okay, now we're going to get to that M by letting the slope of the secant line approach the slope of the what we're going to define as the tangent line, the slope uh, of the line passing through P. And so there's some work to do on that. This amounts to saying that the tangent line is the limiting position of the secant line PQ as Q approaches P. So, informally, the 
the um, tangent line is the limit of the secant lines. So here's our definition. Tangent line to the curve, y equals f of x, at, the, at some point in the plane, is the line through p and with slope, and this is the way we're defining the slope. The limit as x approaches a of the quotient it's a difference quotient. The difference of f of x and f of a all over the difference of x and a. Provided that the limit exists. Example. Find an equation of the tangent line to the parabola y equals x squared at the point 1, 1. Now we looked at this before and we used a table to approximate the slope of the tangent. Okay, so we're trying to get the tangent line and f of x is x squared in this particular problem a is 1, so 1, f of 1, that's the point. And of course we know that's 1, 1. So according to this definition, the slope is the limit as x approaches 1 f of x minus f of 1 all over x minus 1, where f of x is x squared. And so we now have this version. Of course, we recognize that numerator is a difference of squares, which is the product of conjugates, and can be factored. And after the factoring, of course, we are able just to call that x plus 1. And using simple limit laws, as x approaches 1, x plus 1 is 1 plus 1, which are 2. Of course, that's m, right? We're trying to find the slope of the tangent line and the slope is 2 okay so at the point 1 1 at the point 1 1 of the graph of the squaring function you know what's the what's the equation of this tangent line well it has slope 2 and we also know another point on the graph, an x1, y1. And if you, have, if you have a point and a slope, you can get the equation using point-slope form. And so that, of course, is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So you make your three substitutions. Uh, and, or, uh, or you can write it in slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, by adding 1 to both sides, distributing the 2, then you have 2x minus 2 plus 1, or 2x minus 1, just as we had uh, gotten earlier. And so this time we were able to use it precisely. We were able to prove that that is the equation of the tangent line, we didn't just infer it by using an approximation. <clears throat> we sometimes refer to the slope of the tangent line to a curve at a point as the slope of the curve at the point. As strange as that sounds, okay, a curve, you know, doesn't have a slope lines are what have slopes, but we could talk about slope of the curve if we define what we mean. The idea is that if we zoom in far enough toward the point, the curve looks almost like a straight line. Okay. 
And so figure two is going to illustrate this procedure. Again, y equals x squared, same point, 1, 1, and we're going to zoom in. Okay, getting closer, you can see now our window is different. We're zooming in. And it's just looking more and more like a line. And so that has become a way to understand differentiability. And that is, uh, does a nearsighted bug sitting on the line think, or sitting on the curve think it's a line? If so, then your function is differentiable. Now, this of course is about the the tangent line, slope of the tangent line, and here's the tangent line. It has a certain slope. But then as you zoom in, it appears that we have that line, that exact line, um, when we zoom in. It appears that way. The more we zoom in, the more the parabola looks like a line. In other words, the curve becomes almost indistinguishable from its tangent line. There's another expression for the slope of the tangent line that is sometimes easier to use. Okay, so here's the first expression, and we're going to prefer another one sometimes. We're going to let this x minus a here be h. We're just going to define h to be x minus a. And so the slope of the secant line, pq, is that, right? We're not taking a limit, so it's just the secant line. And let's get the picture of that in here. Um, the, the secant line is the blue line, and its equation actually is... Um, well, the slope is the slope of the blue line is this very thing here. Okay. H greater than zero. Here's H. That's that in the previous picture was X minus A. Q is to the right of P. Now if it happened that H was negative, Q would be to the left of P. Notice that as a, x approaches a, okay, so as x approaches a, h approaches 0, okay? So this point here we used to call x f of x, but now we're saying x is a plus h, which is another way of writing this equation. Okay, so that was the old picture, but now we're saying, okay, let's let's have an a and an a plus h, okay, and and this distance is going to zero, so h is going to zero as the point q approaches point p, and so the expression for the slope of the tangent line, the pink one, in definition one becomes same thing but with a limit. Now we're taking a limit as h approaches 0 of the slope of the secant line, f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. Okay, So it does look a little bit simpler and practically is going to be somewhat easier to use in some cases.